right now, police in Virginia looking to connect the dots between the man charged in the disappearance of UVA student Hannah Graham and a third young woman. We'd heard there was a second one. Now we're talking about three. They're trying to determine if Jesse Matthew Jr. may have had a hand in the murder of a 23 year old co-ed at Lynchburg College back in 2009. This comes just days after they said forensic evidence linked Matthew to the 2009 killing of, Vir of Virginia Tech co-ed. And now police say they're worried there could be even more victims. Let's talk about it with Brian Silber, former prosecutor, and Pilar Prince, a trial attorney. Good to see you both. Good morning. Good to see you. All right, Pilar, let me start with you. Uh, if this is your client, how worried are you getting? <laughs> well, right now, Shannon, all we know is circumstantial evidence and um, what his defense attorney has publicly stated so far is that the state has yet to give him any evidence that's credible evidence that links his client to these other crimes. So at this point, um, unless he's spoken to his client and knows something we don't know, I as a defense attorney, I would be concerned because I think that the state is going to do everything they can to link him to um, these two other crimes, but so far they haven't shown him anything. All right, Pilar, at this point moving forward, there's so much that we don't know that's coming together, uh, a case building. What are you thinking that's about right. uh, uh, potential jurors at this point? Because there is an overload of news and speculation coming out right now. Well, I think that we're, um, Shannon, getting to the jurors is probably putting the cart before the horse at this point because um, if I were his defense attorney, what I would want to be doing is speaking to him and finding out whether there's a link or not because, again, um, the state has been very quiet so far and uh, forensic evidence really is going to either prove or disprove a link to um, Mr. Matthew and these two other crimes. So I really wouldn't be thinking beyond finding that out right now and speaking to my client. And then if there is a link, uh, because it is a death penalty state, I would be looking to find out. My goal at this point would be to spare his life. Yeah, if, Of course, if there's a link. So yeah. let's move on yep. to topic two. An Oregon man who tried to blow up a Christmas gathering in downtown Portland back in 2010. It's kind of been out of the headlines, but this guy's going to learn his fate later today. The 23-year-old Somali-American was convicted last year. He's now facing up to 40 years behind bars. And just to remind people, he pressed a button on a cell phone that he thought was going to detonate some type of explosive there, but really uh, it was a phony. Uh, it had been, um, you know, put together by law enforcement, so there was no actual danger, but he didn't know that. So, Pilar, what do you think? Prosecutors want 40 years for this guy. Well, you know, the, um, his attorney is saying that he calls that to be a very draconian result and points to that another man who was convicted of something very similar only got 18 years. Um, he has argued entrapment, which is basically saying that he would not have been likely to have uh, pushed the button and committed this act had he not been induced to do so by law enforcement. And assuming that that has not panned out and that the jury has not accepted that defense, I think 40 years still is a long time when you consider that um, by pushing the button, although he thought he was doing something, nobody actually was harmed. All right, great to see That's you both. That's true. Thank you. Good to see you. Thanks. Thank you.